The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the May 28th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And, of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life, that's right, life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more importantly, during this next hour, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in, 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered. Let those fingers do the walking. Go ahead, send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And in our Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network, I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, the Dow up seven points, so a flat market. S&P up one, flat there as well. NASDAQ 100 up four tenths of a percent, 31 points. Russell is up two points, flat there. Semis down four points, uh, down three tenths of a percent. So flattish type market, spot volatility index not flat, up 58 pennies, trading at 1643 above its 50-day exponential moving average. Always says we need to be on guard when we see that kind of a setup out there. Gold trading back six bucks, silver down 24 cents, lights we crude up 61 pennies. Leaders to the upside, dollar-wise, Amazon up 22 bucks, Chipotle up 16, Google 15, Mercado Libre 14, Shopify 8, Solution Inc. up nearly 7. To the downside, American Wood, uh, which one is that? American Wood, 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 A W A M W D Woodmark Corporation. They're a very good entity. They do a lot of uh, charity stuff out there. But right now, uh, they're getting hammered, down 9.5%, nearly 10%, $8 and change. Keezer Life Science down 42%. Well, that's a stinger. Uh, that's off 7 bucks. Roku down 5 Argenix down about 5 Idex Labs off 350 Philip Morris down 360 So let's begin where you want to begin. And there are no requests out there. So let's begin where I want to begin which I'm not sure where that is, but it is, uh, let's 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 do this by taking a look at the equity market. So what do we know about today and the importance of today and price? Well, or what are we doing today? And this morning, what the markets tried to do, let's start with the Dow Equity Futures contract. We'll go take a look at all four. But the Dow Equity Futures contract, in essence, stopped where it should have if it was going to uh, find resistance, which, is di which it did. We're looking at the 30-minute chart, so we're just kind of simplifying things. And on this 30-minute chart, we can see that little TD setup, green horizontal line, that is resistance, exactly where the rally stopped this morning, right there at that level. What's that level out there? That level, by the way, is going to be 25,694. So if the markets are going to make a concerted move to the upside, price will need to close over that on a 30-minute basis. Now, it's possible that I'm going to see or we're going to see another nine count set up to the downside. But if we do, it's really just going to be slightly above the resistance level, slightly above that one. So you know where resistance is at inside the Dow Equity Futures contract. Look good. Got up there. Said, not the first time. If we take a look at the NQ, the NQ was like, hey, hey, tag along with me. What are you talking about? 
Well, what I'm talking about is price closed over that resistance level right as we came into 10 o'clock. It didn't last very long, did it? A little bit of a false breakout above resistance. But what happened was its friends, the Dow, the ES Mini, let's put up the ES Mini 30 minute time frame, it said not so fast. That's right, not so fast. Take a look at where price stopped out here, right at that resistance level. The resistance level, by the way, that I'm referring to is 28.38.50. That's right, I'm referring to the interest session. And yeah, it was one tick above that at 10 o'clock. One tick, one tick. That's not enough for you. That's not enough for me. Price was unable to take that level out. But those are the levels to the upside that are muy importante as we speak about today's session. I don't know what's going to happen between now and two. I'm not sure what's going to happen between now and later this afternoon. But I do know we should, you should, everybody should be watching those levels. Because if price closes above that, what does that say? And I'm not going to exclude or leave out, for those of you that love the Russell 2000, take a look at the number on the Russell 2000. You can see that interest session price found resistance where it should have, and it did. That means we're going to be watching the level. The level is 15.21.30. We're at 15.17 right now. Write those numbers down in your pad of paper. Take a look at where they're trading the rest of the afternoon, especially on each half-hour basis, meaning 1, 1.30, 2, 2.30, 3, 3.30. Each of those half-hours, if we're closing or price of closing above those levels, it's going to generate a big, important, muy importante picture for you. Now, the other thing that needs to take place, that muy importante picture, is what's that spot volatility index doing? Trade right now at 16.39. As you know, I mentioned it's trading above the 50-day, or I believe that it is. If we look at all the VIX symbols out here, we'll see that the 50-day level is 15.39. One dollar, Mortimer. That's right, one dollar away from where it needs to close below in order to send a signal that a rocket ship is getting ready to take off. We don't have that signal just yet. It appears that there's a fueling that is going on as we speak. Now, many of you say may say, how can you say that, Steve-O? Well, what I can say is I'm just paying attention to the numbers, those that we looked at, this that we just looked at inside the spot volatility index, and I'm noticing a bullish reversal candle as we speak right now in the daily NQ chart. So everything is in the last piece of this bottom and it may just be a counter trend rally that'll last for a few days. We take things one step at a time. But if price closes over those levels that we looked, this candlestick itself will extend itself. And the NQ will get up to 74.79 at a minimum. Of course, that number is going to change just slightly. So you got to cut me a little bit of slack on that. But the NQ, quietly speaking, you may be looking at the market out here. You may be feeling disgusted. You may be feeling feeling like saying, gosh, darn it, everybody's on vacation. There's not much going on. I say that may not be the case. Keep a close eye on these numbers. It's all about the numbers. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. The numbers aren't in just yet, but they might be by the end of the day. We'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, so still no requests uh, by email. Um, I'll keep uh, checking those out there. So we're taking a look at the equity futures contracts and, and what to be aware of, what to be watching out here. Um, you know, as we come into the end of the uh, trading session. Now, if you take a look at the NASDAQ on a five-hour time frame, you know, another couple numbers that we can look at. So, look, this thing here, when it made its most recent high, did it with the Rose Momentum Indicator top, this thing being the five-hour chart for the NQ. You can see that uh, back here last week, uh, both you had a TD set up a nine-count bottom. You had a Rose Momentum Indicator signal bottom. So everything is in place here. This, the daily time frame chart is suggesting to you and I to anticipate that at least what the uh, traders inside the NQ are trying to do is to make a bottom. Now we can also see that price today, this morning, uh, stopped right at the resistance level, the top of its current profile in the five hour time frame at 73.70 out here. And so that would be another number. I don't recall the number that I gave you with regard to the, uh, the TD setup. Uh, uh, price levels out here. But here's another level. Can't be that far away from where we're at. 73, uh, not price-wise now, but the 73.70 level. So that would be another key area. Now, it's always possible that the uh, profiles are going to change on this. We just have to go with the information that we have. The information that we have says you close above 73.70, and the NQ has officially given you a bottom signal with more of a rally to come. And we'll just have to take things one step at a time should that unfold. Has it unfolded yet? And the answer is no. If you're an aggressive trader, you go ahead and you step into it. I'm not suggesting that you do that. I'm suggesting that's what a aggressive trader has done because there's always a possible outcome that even though uh, the, the signals have formed, not yet completely confirming, that the NQ is actually going to go ahead and make a A to B equals CD to the downside. That's the other side out here of that potential pattern. What does that look like? Well, if we go take a look at the NQ, let's do it uh, like this. Let's put this up on the screen. Let's take a look at the daily time frame chart. Let's take a look at what needs to happen for that. Let's put in the A to B equals CD pattern here. The A point is going to be the high from April 25th. 
The B point, real easy to spot. That's the May 14th low. The C point, very easy to spot as well. The May 16th high. One to one to the downside says a trip to 70.51 and change out there. In order for that to happen, price is going to have to close below the B point. You can see the B point is 72.90. 72.90 is held as support. Forget the fact that it says Apogee. That's really not Apogee out there. But a key level of support has held inside of the NQ out here. Hmm. Very interesting. Well, to make the NQ even more interesting out here is what has transpired during the last hour and a half or so. What is that? We have a new potential profile. I say potential because it's not the end of the day. We're using Stevie's advanced Doppler readings out here. Uh, so for those of you that even have task market profiles, you're not going to get this on your system or not likely to get it on your system out here. So this is using all the advanced tools, and in the advanced tools section, what you and I can see is there's the potential for a new profile, meaning Doble Gi support at 7305.30. So we know that the swing point is held. We now know that we have a bullish, or we do know, a potentially bullish structured profile. The bottom at 7305, the center at 7379. Just happens to be that the high today is 7371. So we've got some really lovely, did I say lovely? I mean gorgeous, beautiful pieces of information for you and I to use. We've got a 30-minute number. That's not too far from the 7379. It might really be there. We got the point of control at 7379. We got the five-hour time frame chart that gave us a figure of, what was it, uh, 7371. Um, so we've got a lot of great information out here uh, that uh, should help you and I to understand what the market is going to do. Now, of course, if this is a bottom, this is why an aggressive trader could say, gosh darn it, I'm just going to go ahead and attack right now, and I'll go ahead and close out that trade if we get a close below that B point, the trading session from May the 14th, 72.90. Okay, and and you do that, and you say, well, where's the counter trend? Where's the rally at least likely to take us to? Where's that next piece of information? Well, that would be 7529 out there. That's the Nasdaq. None of the other indices, equity futures contracts that you and I go take a look at are we going to get this type of valuable information to assist us with regard to what the market is going to do next at this stage of the game. Even as slow as today might be, even though it feels like we're watching paint dry, watch the paint dry in the NQ. Pretty much everything else is irrelevant. It will take its cue from the NQ. It needs to follow along. It's got to get off of that wall out there. Well, I'm not sure which wall, but that's the only thing. Well, you can add that spot volatility index to. A $1 move to the downside, a close below that 50-day, then you're talking about a rocket ship heading up to, uh, well, we have the numbers to look at out there. So I don't know what else it is. It's 124 that we're going to talk about uh, during the uh, the rest of the uh, show because there's really not a whole lot that I can. I'd love to answer your questions. You just got to give us a call at 877-927-6648. Type something in on the den. Uh, send me an e email. Well, John did here. Okay, so John in Sarasota says, uh, good afternoon, Steve. Good afternoon, John. Has uh, Intel dis
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance the path is David of White's daily trading newsletter. And if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go back to John in Sarasota. His question, sorry about that, that we got knocked off the uh, air there. But um, uh, John in Sarasota, his question was, uh, has Intel, in, in INTC, by the way, is a ticker symbol, has Intel decided which direction looks best? By direction, John is asking to the upside or the downside. And what I was saying is, because of the potential patterns that I see inside the NQ out here, I was asking myself the same question, which was, well, what are the beaten down sector uh, sectors look like out here? And certainly the semis qualify there. Now, John, let's start with the bigger picture. Uh, the end of the month is Friday. The end of May is Friday out here. And when we take a look at the signals as we speak right now from a monthly basis inside the semiconductor index, it says that the bigger picture is more downward price pressure. You've got a perfect Rhodes momentum indicator top. Typically, it's not just a one-month deal out here. And this says the bigger picture is to the downside. So I want to make sure that we start with the monthly time frame um, because that's a, a very important topping signal and pattern. Now, John, when you and I go take and we're looking, as opposed to just looking at Intel, we'll go back. I want to answer your question. We'll go take a look at Intel. But I need to understand, hey, what's, what is the indice 
doing out here? You know, what's the preponderance of evidence of the stocks? What are they doing? What are their signals? In the case of the semiconductor index for its weekly time frame out here, no bottoming signal. In fact, this says that price could easily pull back to its breakout level. That breakout level was January in 2019, and that was down at the 1143.24 mark out there. Now, let's go take a look at the daily chart. Because, John, I don't know your time frame and what it is you're looking at. But does the semiconductor index display any types of signals to you and I? Well, the first thing that we know is a couple of days ago, May 23rd, you did get a hammer candle. There was also a gap to the downside. So now you've got competing bullish and bearish signals out here. Gap to the downside, bearish. A hammer candle, bullish. Well, when you have a gap, is it really a hammer? I've always been perplexed perplexed by that question. I don't need to be perplexed. Just look for the patterns that would be completing at the time of that candle session and always watch the low of that session out here. So it looks like today is going to be day number seven, potential day number seven of a potential TD setup nine count, meaning that the bottom could actually occur either tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. So, John, what I would say is because if you get that nine count out here at a minimum, you should see some type of counter trend rally, at least up to about the 1386 uh, type level. Uh, right now we're trading at 1309. So that's what I see when I take a look at the semis. Now, when we push this over, we take a look at Intel, INTC, watching the bottom of that hammer candle is going to be important. Now, we take a look at Intel, uh, although it didn't generate a by a uh, hammer candle, it created a nice bullish engulfing candle uh, just two days ago. And that suggests to you and I that, yes, what Intel is trying to do is give you a signal that it is getting ready to rally. Now, what price has never done here, John, over the past couple of days is close above Stevie's red line. It tried to on Friday. It failed to do so. That red line acted as resistance out there. The red line number is 4430 inside of Intel. Now, even if price makes a low, so what does that mean? That means now is too early to enter that trade to the upside. The buyers have, come, have, have now suggested to you that they are doing what they can to try to form a bottom. Will they have the strength to do so? I don't know. Even if price moves below the low from last Thursday, it still could be doing that with a less relative weakness out there. So this pattern is in play out here. The key number inside of Intel is 4430. If we go take a look at the – now, Intel, by the way, John, whereas on a monthly chart – it's this month that the semis gave you the topping signal. It was last month. It was that bearish engulfing candle occurring with that Rhodes Momentum Indicator topping signal that suggests that Intel wanted lower price. Here's the bearish side. The bearish side is that that bottom that you and I are looking for at this stage isn't going to happen. That the monthly chart, the one we're looking at right now, uh, the weekly I haven't put up, it doesn't show a bottom signal, which suggests that price is pulling back Intel to its breakout level. Its breakout level is right back here in September, and that number is 3493. So there's potential. But, John, in order for Intel to have that bottom, at a minimum, you need to see a close above Stevie's red line. That should answer your question. It's around 4430. It's going to change over time. Signals are in to suggest that it is going to form a bottom. It's waiting for the Q, so to speak, from the NQs. Hope that answers your question. John in the Tiger's Den wanted to take a look at the July contract for coffee. So let's go do that for him. Let's go take a look at four different profiles out here. Uh, let's go find that July contract. He got coffee trade out at 96.15. Uh, if we take a look at the... The, let's take a look at the daily slash weekly. This is the daily time frame, John, that we're looking at. We're just looking at profiles right now. The profiles show that uh, today price is breaking above the top of that box, also above the uh, center of the weekly profile. That's at 94.84. The signal here with regard to the July contract for coffee is that price should make its way up to the top of that box right now. That's 100.68. Any close above the top of that weekly profile says a change in trend is in place. How do we know that? Well, we're just using, we're just mastering probability out here. 
And the probability, if we take a look at uh, uh, coffee futures, what you won't see out here ever since uh, back in the October of last year, 2018 timeframe, you don't see closes above the weekly profile. Well, to be specific, the weekly profile that came into place in November of 2018 out here. So closing above that, John, would be a signal that a change in trend has taken place. Now, there's an earlier there's an earlier signal that that likely has occurred. What do we mean, jelly bean? Well, if we take a look at the daily profiles and take those back to October of 2018, what we notice out here is we only see a break of the top of a daily profile. We see one, two, one, two, three days where that's happened since. Well, since when? Since back in uh, October of 2018. So now you have another break. Is this a false break? I don't know if it is or it isn't. But it's clearly a break above resistance, the top of that daily box at 93.60. You're now above the center line. It's a weekly chart, weekly time frame. So the week's not over till Friday, but in early signals, once you can clear that point of control, where both buyers and sellers are most comfortable with price, this is telling us that it's actually buyers that are the ones that are in control. So at this stage, at 1.37 in the afternoon, the signal is that price wants to make a run for 100.68. Now, let's back it down a little bit by taking a look at the shorter-term time frames out here. By shorter term, we can take a look at 2.40 above the top of the box. I'll be happy to put up the five-hour time frame. Its profiles, if we take a look at it, uh, well above the top of that. It's above the top of the 120. In, it's trading with inside a resistance zone, a new 60-minute profile, 96.45 is the number there at the top, 94.93 at the bottom. So you've got kind of like a sideways-ish um, move uh, inside of uh, coffee. So at this stage, uh, you just threw out there, I think, just to look at it, uh, what was your question? I don't have the question. Please also, July coffee. If you put something else in there, I'm sorry, I just don't see it. Uh, but at this stage here, uh, it looks like coffee is broken out. Hope that helps you out. Best of luck to you. Dow's up six, S&P basically totally flat at 2826. Great. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back. Uh, Dow's up 10 S&P a point. Uh, NASDAQ uh, 132 points. Uh, it's the NQ that you're going to be watching the rest of the day. Uh, question from Mike inside the Tiger stand. You want to take a look at metals. Uh, I'm assuming gold is one of those metals. So as we go take a look at its uh, market profiles for the uh, 6120, uh, the five hour and the uh, daily, uh, what you're going to see here is basically green a red shoots out here. You're basically seeing price trading below profiles. Now, in the 60-minute, that's not the case. There is a bullish structured profile that uh, formed here in the past uh, hour or so, Mike. The top of that uh, resistance level would be 1280.70. The bottom is 1276. Close below 1276. That's not a good thing. Now, I don't know if the if the lows are going to get busted out of uh, Goldilocks out here, uh, but uh, there's nothing great about the chart daily or weekly out here trading below profiles now the daily as you and i have taken a look at over the past a week or so did generate a potential bottom pattern that is a uh, letter number g wave number seven to the downside it hasn't been taken out so that's a possibility and the other possibility for a uh, bottom is on the weekly time frame chart it formed that td setup at nine count with the bar following the nine count being the bottom thus far. But in the case of gold, Mike, just so that uh, you, anybody else out there doesn't get sucked in, um, what we can clearly see here is that what gold has been unable to do is close above Stevie's green line. It's currently measured at 1289.70. It's gonna change slightly out here. On a weekly basis, that's what you need to see is a close above that green line number. And until that happens, um, you know what? Price could continue to move lower out here. Yep, could continue to move lower. So the weekly time frame chart is very clear with regard to its message. It's very clear with regard to the Gertley sell pattern out here. And uh, we just don't have any other signal other than that TD setup nine count that there is a potential for a bottom. If it fails, and that's really what the question should be, where's gold headed to? Pretty easy, the breakout level. The breakout level here for gold uh, is going to be the um, 1239.50 level. 1239.50 is where gold could easily pull back to out here. So that's what I see when I take a look at uh, metals. Uh, if the other metal was silver, if we go take a look at silver, down 24 pennies, and again, we do the same kind of thing, definitely a horrible-looking chart out here. Now, when I say horrible-looking chart, what do I mean? Well, what I mean right now is silver is trading below its daily profile out here. That's not good. No way is it good. And a price likely, if, ah, sorry about the apogee number, but 1417, Mike, is likely its target. And that's a, a swing point that, and I'm not saying that's where it's going to find support. That happens to be the lows from back on November 14th, 2018 out here. But the uh, it's uh, trading below daily, weekly, so that becomes a swing point that it would like you look at. Now, look, you can see here I can't really go back much further, so let's do this. Let me put up my composite contract out here. Prices may be different, but that's okay. We're trying to understand where silver is headed to. So let's see if I can pull that information up. Now we've got more. Uh oh, uh, why didn't that pull it up? Why didn't that pull it up? Uh, do I need? No, it should have pulled it up. Uh huh. So I've got a data issue here, Mike. My apology. I don't know what it is that's not getting the. Uh, 
flow through on the daily. Uh, we'll leave it like this. Uh, I'll recheck in on it before the show uh, because we want to take a look at some additional downside action. Let me put up, um, well, that, that's what I see when I take a look at metals out here. So I hope that that helps you out. A question that uh, came in here uh, just a few minutes ago as well. This one coming in from JDA. Uh, that is Dan in uh, Texas. Dan in Texas says, I want to buy some Ferraris for my grandson. I think you should definitely do that. I want to be your grandson. Oh, you want to buy race, the Ferrari stock. Oh, well, that is very kind of you. And it's been super bullish for a long-term buy. Should I buy now, chase a little longer, or just wait for the retrace? How old's your grandson? How old is your grandson, Dan? That's the question I would ask. Because maybe what you want to do is you maybe want to begin this portfolio. I like the concept of something really cool like a Ferrari out there. And probably that is to get your grandson really, you know, into the market out here. We're going to go take a look at race, by the way. But for your grandson, just go ahead. If you're going to buy it now and chase it, it's going to be put away for a while. Just go buy the NASDAQ. Just buy him the NASDAQ. Just go buy the NDX 100 for a while because, because for your grandson, uh, over the next year or so, a couple of years, you should see that scream higher out there. But specifically, let's answer your question with regard to race. Let's go take a look at race. What we can see here right now, it's taken on a previous high from May 16th, just a few days ago. That had a million shares. You're at 306,000 shares today. Kind of light volume. That doesn't mean that it's bad or anything. Just mean that it's light volume. The weekly chart says, you know, price is trying for its trading with inside the swing point from back in June of 2018, likely to head to 149.85. Your 144.99 is now the time to buy it. No, it's not because it's going to make 100% move of a move or should price above the weekly profile out here. But what we don't know is is price going to be able to bust through that level on that weekly basis, 2.8 million shares. This week, we don't know what it's going to be. It's a short week out here, 306,000 for the day. But last week, what we do know is price was pushing out with 2.3. And then the week before that, 3 million shares going against um, 2.8. So likely going to go ahead and target that level. But I can't say, not because I can't say, I can't say because I don't know. I don't see the signal here to suggest that it will go ahead and break out. On a monthly basis, maybe this is the better volume perspective. When it made its high... Back in July, was about 9 million shares. Well, you've got 11 million shares right now. So I'm going to say, Dan, price is going to go tag that high. I don't know if it's going to bust it out. It may bust it out. Um, uh, buy him a share or two, I suppose. I don't know what you're thinking in the scheme. But I'd really rather see you um, because I believe there will be more percentage upside movement. Uh, in uh, the equity markets themselves, the indices for your grandson, than uh, for an individual stock like uh, Ferrari out there. Uh, but that's just my take. Uh, if I were to look at the other time frame charts, I don't see any other topping signal. But you and I must know. Uh, and the bottom, by the way, the bottom signal back here was the most recent one was May 7th. You have a little bit of an island reversal, but it was a TD setup nine count the next day. That gap up said, OK, price wanted to run higher. Plus, it closed above Stevie's green line, that resistance. So that was the last real buy signal. You're in wave number three, letter number C on my chart out here. Again, price may still continue to move higher for your grandson if you want to really stick to race then buy a pullback versus buy the breakout as we speak uh right now and and part of the reason is folks you know we're talking about paying attention to the nq for the potential of just a counter trend rally maybe it turns into something more than that maybe it does but let's not forget the bigger picture out here we're in the unfavorable seasonal cycle the unfavorable seasonal cycle and when you and i take a look at charts like this Let's see if we can get them out there real quickly. The S&P 500 with a Rhodes momentum indicator top and a bearish engulfing candle for the month. Prices could move easily down into October. We'll be right back.
Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige. I'm living a primal lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back. Uh, so basically flat markets, NDX up uh, 30 points. Uh, you've got the U.S. dollar index up 328 pennies. Trade down at 97.80. I've got a 10-minute delay there, so your feed may show something slightly different. You've got uh, treasuries moving to the upside. Uh, so what's that all about? Well, as, as you may know, there were uh, many elections over in Europe over the weekend. We get to see what the big money is communicating with regard to the outcome of those elections. So forget about the political landscape, just how about the financial landscape of those elections and what they actually mean to the markets out here. And what we're seeing, the signals here, whether it's the euro that we take a look at, here's a monthly time frame chart for the euro. Let's go ahead and put that up on our screen. A huge, beautiful descending uh, price channel that it's trading in. Suggests to me over the long haul that the uh, euro is headed back towards the bottom. Uh, it's breakout, uh, breakout on a week, a month basis is right around March of 2017 and the 1.05 level. Now, an easy way to uh, get your money out of euros and pounds is to go ahead and uh, hold U.S. Treasuries. And that's what we're seeing take place here. So you got the dollar index up. you got the U.S. Treasuries up a full point right now, 152.01. They want to continue to move higher as well. This is one way. And we're going to also see the U.S. markets eventually trade higher as well as money continues to pour out of uh, certainly European markets into U.S.-based products, whether it's the dollar, whether it's the stock markets, whether it is uh, treasuries out there. Got to be a beautiful thing. 
is maybe as bad as things look. Uh, they're not so bad just here. So, folks, thanks so much for being here. You've got the information you need for the end of the day with regard to price. And uh, stay tuned because I know we've got a beautiful show. I believe that David White is on vacation but I'm not mistaken, so I'm going to believe there's a replay that's coming up. And then Tom O'Brien live from 3 to 5. Thanks for being here. We'll look forward to seeing you on what tomorrow is already hump day, Wednesday. That's a beautiful thing. I like four-day work weeks. How about you? We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>